I'm super excited to share with you my TBR for 72 hours in the reading nook. This is a 72 hour readathon that I am hosting along with Mel from Melanor Reads and Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy. This time we are joined by Monica from A Little Bit of Monica as well. There are two different wheels for this round. There's an in your comfort zone and out of your comfort zone wheel. Each day you pick a wheel to spin. That's the wheel you spin anytime you need a new book that day. There are a few more rules, so I'll have the announcement video linked in the description for you. But this is coming up. It is February 22nd through 25th, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern on Thursday and running to 6 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. For the readathon, we also have some bookmarks available. The readathon is very heavily based on reading sprints. So we have these really cute bookmarks that say I can't read without sprints and they are double sided. So we have the purple and blue option and we also have another one that is double sided but this one is green and pink. So these are available individually or as a set on Etsy and that will be linked in the description. I have big 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 plans. If you're not aware I have a pretty big goal of reading pretty much all of my physical TBR this year. I kind of screwed myself over because I got like 20 books from Mel when she was unhauling them, but we don't need to talk about that. So a lot of these I own. I have some books picked for each wheel, and I will tell you why I put them on my list, but I also definitely tried to prioritize things that I could get the audiobook for as well. That is the way that I read the fastest. I really struggle with my attention span, so audiobooks really help me get through books. So with the two wheels, I do plan on reading more of the books in my comfort zone, especially because that is more of what I own on my shelves. But I do have some out of my comfort zone I want to talk to you about. So out of your comfort zone does not need to be genres you don't like or books you think you won't like. All of these are books that I own, but they are still out of my comfort zone. If you would generally pick something else up over these other books, even though you're still interested in them, I would say that counts as out of your comfort zone. So I have a few criteria that fit that for me. For me, it could be just reading a book physically with my eyeballs. It could be nonfiction like Paperbacks from Hell, which will be on my TBR. This is talking about 70s and 80s horror fiction. It could be the time the book was published, which is why I have Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. So even though this is in my most read genre, this still very much feels out of my comfort zone. Another one that is in the genre I typically read, but it's not the same age range I usually read, I have How to Survive Your Murder by Danielle Valentine. This is a YA horror slasher, I think. And then I do have two that are a little bit more out of my comfort zone, but they are also both YA. So I have Neverworld Wake by Marisha Pessel. I think this one might have a little bit of fantasy in it, but I think it's mainly a mystery. And then I guess the most out of my comfort zone is Dig by A.S. King. This is YA and it is like magical realism fabulism. I've heard this one is really weird, which is exciting to me. So these are the five books on my physical TBR that are out of my comfort zone. So these will be options for that wheel. I am also planning on browsing Libby like Mel and Cass recommended on Tethered Sky by Fonda Lee. This is a short fantasy novella. I could pick up a short story collection. So I have plenty of options that are still things that I am very interested in reading, but they still do feel out of my comfort zone. Next, I have a stack of books that are in my comfort zone. I do have a few from the library, but mostly from my shelves. These are generally on the shorter side. I don't want to only be reading novellas, but I don't want it to be a book that's going to feel so long. And it's taking me a while to get through and I get frustrated. So I have two graphic novels. The Night Eaters book two, Her Little Reapers. I obviously have read book one. This is the same author as Monstrous. So it's a very similar art style and I enjoyed the first one. And then the second one is A Guest in the House by Emily Carroll. I heard Gabby from Gabby Reads talking about this one. I don't think it was an absolute favorite for her, but it has a really cool premise. So these are my graphic novel priorities. I tend to read a decent amount of graphic novels and manga, and they're both within my genres. The next one is one that I have from the library, and that is Everyone Who Can Forgive Me Is Dead by Jenny Hollander. This is a mystery thriller. It's a debut, which is fun. I don't even know where I heard about this book, but I placed a hold at my library, and now I have have it and it's short so I'd like to get to it. Next up I have some novellas. Honestly one of these could probably count as out of my comfort zone so I'll talk about that one. That is The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. This is horror but I think it's older which kind of puts it out of my comfort zone. Yeah this first came out in 1998 and there's no audiobook so really this one actually does belong out of my comfort zone. I didn't think about this being an older one but I've heard the writing in this one makes it a little difficult so I'm a little scared. And some that are definitely more in my comfort zone. I have Standalone by Paul Michael Anderson. This is a sci-fi slasher. Pretty short one. Plastic Monsters by Daniel J. Velope. Two more horror. I have The Laws of Disguise. I think this 
is some sort of nature horror. And The Last Haunt by Max Booth the Third. This is following somebody that runs an extreme haunted house. One that is not horror, but still a novella. Rosebud by Paul Cornell. I think this is gonna be a little quirky, but it is sci-fi. Another novella that I don't have is Mislaid in Parts Half Known by Shauna McGuire. This is the ninth book, I believe, in the Wayward Children series. I've read all of them. So even though it is fantasy, I don't consider this one really out of my comfort zone. I want a few that are a little bit longer. I have The Grip of It by Jack Jemick. Honestly, I don't know what this is about, but the cover is very interesting. I have The Woodkin by Alexander James. This is a camping horror. And Gone Tonight by Sarah Pekinen. This is a more domestic thriller. I've enjoyed and not enjoyed from this author in her duo when she was writing with Greer Hendrix. I've heard really good things about this one. I've heard a lot of people be surprised by it. So I hope this one goes really well for me. Then I have The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. I honestly have heard terrible things about this, but it's really short. And I feel like now is the time to give it a go. If I don't like it, I'll just DNF it. And then I can get it off of my shelves. So <laughs> maybe not the best book for a readathon where you're trying to get through things quickly, but I'm going to give it a go. And lastly, I have Don't Move by James Murray and Darren Wearmouth. This is a short one. This textured cover, so cool. This duo wrote one of my favorite books of last year. So I'm really looking forward to I didn't think this through. Here's some books that I would like to get to in 72 hours in the reading nook. I can for sure get to all of these during that time. But it is nice to have some options because you're not just reading anything. There is the spinner wheel that helps you determine things. So I wanted to have more that I could actually get to so that I have things that should work with tons of options. Just a reminder about the bookmarks we have. If you've made it to the end and want to leave me an emoji to say you were here, you can leave me a potato for dig. And if you also want to let me know you are participating, you can also include the french fries emoji with the regular potato. <laughs> let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them or what you were most looking forward to reading for the readathon. I hope you participate with us and I will see you in the next one. Bye!